Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And today we're going to talk about a topic that might in the future uh, get people at the Pokemon company angry at me if they ever see this channel, but I don't really care because I want to discuss this. In a recent trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the original cut used some music that alarmed people. It appeared that the music was a fan rendition of the Area Zero theme. A lot of people caught notice, noticed that it didn't seem like they credited anybody. And this kind of started a bit of a firestorm on Twitter. So while we wait for more news about Scarlet and Violet, I wanted to take some time to discuss this controversy and make the take that it's a little more complicated than some people on social media put it out to be. Let's discuss it. Before we go into this topic and ideas of copyright and fair use and everything that gets into this complication, I want to shout out the guy who actually made this remix. ND Music does an awesome job on YouTube. They have a ton of incredible remixes and redos of tracks from Pokemon games. The Area Zero theme that they made is fabulous. So I'm gonna link it down below and if you wanna go check it out and listen to it yourself, please do. So I just, I want to put that out there right off the bat. They uploaded a trailer for the newest Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC news in the presents. And when they talked about Area Zero at the end of it, people noticed that the track sounded a little bit different from the original. Lutu, who does a great job with uh, Pokemon uh, preservation and history on social media, called this out on Twitter. And ND Music also commented on it, and their response was that they were honored and surprised that his arrangement got put into the Area Zero trailer, and then kind of intimated that, well, maybe they could have asked me. Totally fair. A lot of people picked this up, some of them absolutely scorching the Pokemon company, some of them strangely defending the Pokemon company and pointing out uh, copyright rules and, and rules of use, and all of this can be true at once. That's kind of was my take. There are guidelines and terms of service in Pokemon's on Pokemon's website, which basically says if you use our intellectual property and you do a remix or a retelling or, or do a parody or something along those lines, we have legal authority over it so they can use it. They don't have to credit ND Music. They didn't have to say we took this from this YouTube channel. It's their property. This is not a legal discussion that I'm making here. It is an ethical discussion. They should have credited ND Music if it was intentional. A lot of people on YouTube do incredible work with the Pokemon soundtrack. Pokemon music is wonderful. There are so many different tracks, so many different regions with their own styles and flares. Pokemon music is wonderful. There's a reason why you see hundreds, if not thousands of videos on YouTube putting together different musical tracks into themes and for seasons and for, for mindsets and for vibes and battle music and cinematic music and all of that. There's a reason that is so popular. There's a reason there are so many social media accounts that post different music tracks from the Pokemon franchise every single day. And whether it's the main series or a spinoff, they all have their own different feel and they all have their standouts. That's if, of course, they intentionally used this music. But Pokemon's actions after the fact would tell you they didn't. They took down the original trailers after it gained a little bit of traction that a track had been used that wasn't original, and they uploaded new versions. I'm gonna play both here, quick snippets of the trailers with sound, just so you can hear the difference. So that's what they sound like. Those are the differences. Subtle enough that if you had watched it once, you probably wouldn't have noticed. Or if you weren't on social media or hadn't listened to ND Music's remixes in the past, you probably wouldn't have noticed it. But enough people did that they took it down and re-uploaded it with the original Area Zero theme, which in and of itself is a great track. So clearly this was not intentional. They should have credited him from the start. Largely, they should have realized from the start that they had a track that wasn't original. How does this get through the cracks? Now, before going further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. 
And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. There's been many criticisms of the Pokemon company over the years that things are rushed, that things aren't triple checked, that things fall through the cracks, that they don't put as much effort into what is one of the largest multimedia brands on the planet that they should. Certainly from a financial standpoint, they have all of the money in the world to put as much effort and time into projects as they want. Nothing they do has to be rushed. They can pay enough people if they want to make sure that there are checks and that things don't slip through the cracks. This is not a condemnation of the people who put together the trailer. This is not a condemnation of indie music. This is not me supporting the Pokemon company not crediting someone's work that they ripped. This is not a legal argument. My point here is much broader. This entity has enough money and resources to ensure that something like this doesn't happen. And they should have. It's another example in a long line of instances where the Pokemon company makes decisions that feel very tone deaf and feel obviously avoidable. And that's the larger problem here. I don't have any issue with them taking the trailer down and putting up a new version because, like I said before, this wasn't an intentional decision. Very obviously, they went and found a music track online to edit into the trailer they were putting up for the Pokemon Presents, and they didn't check to make sure that the track they were using was official. You can create so many questions on this. Why don't they have a, like a, a, a resource internally of the official tracks. Why do they have to seemingly download and rip a track off of YouTube to edit it into a trailer? That shouldn't be a problem. This shouldn't be something that the Pokemon company runs into by mistake. There should be more care and effort put into these trailers. People have commented in the past on some shoddy editing in Pokemon trailers, and I want to be very clear. This is very much like a first world problems kind of critique. There are much bigger problems in the world. There are much bigger issues in gaming itself, much bigger first world problems than this. I want to bring it up because I think it's a relevant discussion, but I, I understand that this is very niche, just like my criticisms of Pokemon Home, which I did get some comments of back a couple months ago. Why does this matter? Why are you making so many videos about this? What well, matters to me? It's my channel. I can do whatever I please. I think that a lot of this could have been avoidable, and I think it casts a poor light on the Pokemon company in what has been a pretty optimistic and exciting release cycle. People are genuinely hyped for Scarlet and Violet's DLC. It goes to something that I've been talking about for many videos now, which is outside of people's criticisms of the game and how it runs. A lot of people have had a great time with Scarlet and Violet, myself included. There is a really good game there. There's a really good loop of gameplay that the Pokemon that Game Freak produced. So people are naturally excited about what seems to be a pretty deep and meaty DLC campaign. It's just a shame that in the road to getting this DLC, which comes out next month, we had to have another controversy pop up. And hopefully, for the sake of everyone who's excited about the DLC, including myself, it is the last controversy about it we have to talk about. And hopefully, this means that in the future, we will see better editing in Pokemon Presents trailers and, and DLC trailers and game trailers in general. Hopefully, they will use their own intellectual property and not have to cause legal arguments on Pokemon Twitter. One can hope but I'm sure that eventually something else will come up. But I wanted to give my two cents on this whole matter. And I want to say again, go check out ND Music's arrangement of the Area Zero theme. I'll leave it down in the comments section below. He did a great job with it. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Pokemon discussions like it in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on so you never miss future content, and leave a like on the video. It does a lot to support me. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.